Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I want to go through how to do crank bearing grease on the mag side. So I got a lot of uh, requests on the PTO side video on how to do the mag side. It is a little more tricky, but it's kind of just as easy. Um, and it's still definitely worth doing. A lot of people just forget about it, even though you're supposed to do it every 3,000 miles and probably sooner. I'm going to show you on a 2008 to 2016, which is the XP and XS chassis. These are going to be exactly the same. And this is going to be very similar to the Gen 1 revs, except on the XP chassis, you can see it easier. So it's going to be a little easier to film. But I will show you on the, on the uh, Gen 1 chassis also. First thing I like to do, I like to just get these doors right out of the way. You pull them up and then lift up like that, pull out, and then it'll slide right away. So this snowmobile has a can, so it makes it actually pretty easy to uh, get to everything and a lot easier to take the exhaust springs off. If this wasn't a carb model, it would have a pyrometer here and then you just follow that up and disconnect it. Now we're just gonna pop off a few of these eight millimeters that are around here. A lot of people don't even put them back on. I just got to take off these, uh, they're T30s. There's uh, four of them around the uh, pull start housing. If you don't have a pull start, there's still these T30s around here. Now we're just going to take off the, uh, there's three th uh, 13 millimeters or for the uh, pull start gear. I'll just pop right off. Now there's one 30 millimeter in here. Pop that off with a half inch. So I have just a harmonic balancer puller set up in here to pull the, uh, flywheel off the crankshaft and this is a keyed uh, flywheel so there's no way to uh, put it on wrong just install these bolts just kind of loose this again this is just a harmonic balancer puller ski do has a puller but i don't see the reason to use it personally this works okay and you're going to want to make sure not to install those bolts too far because you can poke into the stator and screw it up So I didn't get that on video because I was really just, I heated this thing for like 45, uh, 45 seconds or so, maybe even up to a minute um, with tension on the puller. You could kind of see where I heated it right there. And then um, it, it eventually just popped. So really what you need to do is just heat up this taper just enough so it expands and the taper lock releases. Some people hit the end of the puller like while it's attached. Um, I did that a little bit. It didn't work. Heat was the answer for me. Uh, some people tap the side of the puller and that helps for them. So maybe a combination of everything might work. I usually leave one or two bolts on here because that thing is so magnetic against the stator that you kind of takes a little grunt to pull it off and it wants to stay on there. So you want to make sure you get that off without damaging the, uh, it's a crank sensor down in there. So basically now that you have the actual stator exposed, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take off two of these four millimeter Allens. Ideally opposite of each other because one you're going to fill from and then one you're going to evacuate from so provided there's still grease left in here you will see when you fill one through one of these holes you'll see the grease spurt out the other side so now you're going to take your uh, syringe full of isoflex grease i'll leave a link to that in the description and you're going to want to put no more than 15 milliliters of grease in there you might not see the grease spurt out of the other hole this is more of just a release, so relief, so we don't blow out the other side, the actual inner seal. 
So just remember, don't put more than 15 milliliters of grease in there because if you, uh, if you just go and wait for it to come out the other side, then you're really just overfilling it because this stuff does have some expansion when it's warm. And obviously when you run those two bolts back in, it's going to create some sort of pressure and force out the seal on the other side. Now we're just going to put all the bolts back in, all the, uh, the two Allens top and bottom. You're going to kind of feel a little resistance from the, uh, from the grease at first, but that's okay. So this uh, flywheel is keyed, so just make sure it goes back with the key on. Don't try to force it uh, the other way. It'll just fit on nice and easy. There we go. So that's that. It's always a good idea just to throw some, uh, throw some uh, blue Loctite on the 30-millimeter uh, nut. I've heard horror stories about those coming loose, but then again, it is a taper lock. I'd be surprised if it actually ever came off once it's tightened down, so. I told you I'd show you a Gen 1 rev, so here it is. This is a very messy Gen 1 rev, but uh, as you can see, we have just kind of a full plate of steel here rather than just a straight-up uh, E-module, they call it now. It's just cast aluminum. So really, it's all the same deal. You just got to kind of find your way through these holes. It's really not any harder. It's just a little, it's a little more difficult access-wise and viewing-wise. All right, guys, so that's about all there is to uh, MagSide PTO grease. Uh, pretty easy to do. Definitely worth doing every 3,000 miles, every couple seasons. It's cheap enough. I'll post a link to the grease and uh, some of the tools I needed to do the job. And I'll post a link in the comments to the PTO side grease that I did have uh, another video on. So thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment. Thanks. Bye.